Naghahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya, dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa. Kaya kito'y iyong hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa atin Ito ang radio mo Ito ang radio ko Ito ang radio ko Ito ang radio ko Dahil mahal namin kayo Ito ang radio ko Para sa inyo ito V81 Radio Ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino Basta all hits, all Pinoy, panalo Merong kwentong iyakan at tawanan Kahit nasaan ka man ito'y mapapakinggan Ito ang radio ko V81 Radio V81 Radio Dahil mahal namin kayo V81 Radio V81 Radio Para sa inyo ito V81 Radio V81 Radio Ito ang radio ko Dahil mahal namin kayo Para sa inyo ito V81 Radio The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the program anchors and producers and do not necessarily reflect the policies and position of this station. We now bring you the program that brings together leading personalities, representative insights, all together in a meaningful and delightful conversation as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Hosted by Breakthrough Millennial Boomer, Gracie Venezuela, only here on V81 Radio. Almighty God, grant us the courage of Jesus Christ, your Son, to face the coronavirus pandemic with trust, strength, compassion, and resiliency. Give us the grace of the Holy Spirit to free us from fear and anxiety so we may do actions of help and support and look forward to our healing with hope. We pray for the health workers, food liners, maintenance cleaners, logistics abler, government leaders, and volunteers who continuously come together to deliver our daily needs to survive. Guide us from this time of crisis, preserve us in peace, protect the weak and vulnerable, and those who serve to society during this pandemic. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tita Gracie, and I'd like to welcome everyone to Episode 2 
of this uh, show called Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. We are on V81 and we are worldwide, not just here in the Philippines, but reaching out to Filipinos all over the world. And today we are going to tackle a very interesting topic. And we have uh, some of the hardest working creative people in the industry. Today we shall take a closer look at what is called the gig economy and how its players are responding to the pandemic and the enhanced community quarantine. Our guests today are from the events management industry, the performing arts industry, and uh, these creative individuals have made their mark in different stages all over the country, in different performance venues, as well as uh, big uh, corporate events. Now, the gig economy is where people like us, me included, are, are where we get our livelihoods and uh, we've been around for quite a while. And because of the pandemic, all theaters, all gigs have been canceled. So that means to say there are no shows, no concerts, and definitely there's no income. So what does that leave us? Leave, where does this whole crisis leave the artists, event managers, producers, technical people, staging personnel, production assistants, where does this leave all of us? But amidst this crisis, we will see that these creative individuals are responding very positively. And I'm so happy to have the following guests with us. Let me first introduce our first guest. He's no stranger to Manila's nightlife scene. And this gentleman and I have uh, collaborated on some very successful gigs in the past. And uh, certainly, Many people in Metro Manila who like retro dancing know who he is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Mr. Teddy Dario. Teddy? Hi. Hi, Gracie. Tita Gracie pala. That's okay. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I hope you are also safe and uh, well. Yes. Um, it is a blessing that we are spending more time in our homes and with our families. And, uh, you know, we're, we've been so, us in the events industry, we're always busy and we're always running around just to make sure that when people are um, ready to enter our gigs, you know, that's already like 90% of the work is done and it's just 10% na lang because we just have to wait for them to enjoy the, the event that we've prepared for them. So how have you fared so far, Teddy? Uh, well, so far, um, I guess... We're we're trying to get used to staying at home because normally I'm you know I'm so busy planning the events and going to meetings and you know um, running here and there. But right now I'm I'm also happy because I spend more time with the family. So, so yes, it's quite different uh, from the usual schedule that I have. But uh, you know I'm not I'm not really complaining about that. That's true. Um, like what they say, and everybody's calling this particular situation as the new normal, because we don't really know when this um, uh, ECQ will end. They're saying it will be by the end of April. Some people are saying it will extend to mid-May, uh, and it's going to be like that for the foreseeable future. So how have you dealt with it in terms of your suppliers, your talents, your roster of DJs? Uh, I'm sure that um, you had to uh, face, talk to them about uh, this problem. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I did actually. Um, I didn't have a difficult time uh, dealing with them because a lot of them, uh, a lot of my, let's say, like the DJs I work with and the technical people, I've known them for a while, and so um, they understood. Um, and also they knew that it was um, something that uh, everyone had to do um, to to stop the, the virus from spreading. And, you know, we, we all really wanted to flatten the curve. So, yes. uh, of course, I had to I had to explain to them uh, it was a sudden uh, sudden decision, actually, with the uh, with the owners of um, you know the the venue I, I I collaborate with, which is Wildflower. Uh, so it it was a mutual decision, man. That uh, that that was the best um, uh, thing that that we should do uh, yes. for the safety and health of everyone. So uh, all of them were very you know, very uh, very 
nice and uh, uh, they all understood that it had to be done. Yeah, just for the benefit of our audience out there, um, can you give, I know that uh, we have some photos, maybe you can explain what they are in a video of what happens yeah, in your course. event. So um, where, where yeah. were they taken? This was uh, the um, original Wildflower Retro Night in, uh, we started in Rockwell. Um, yes, that uh, the, the first two photos were taken in Rockwell and, and uh, they were very well um, attended events. And we had that know, twice um, on Friday and Saturday. It's so hard to get the table. <laughs> I know the, the reservations had to be, uh, had to be done uh, about six weeks, four to six weeks before. So this is interesting because um, Rock uh, Wildflower is really a dining venue, right? Uh, yeah, it made it well, made it's as yeah, a it's bakery yeah, because bakery. of the cronuts. Remember the the That's big right. goods. Uh, That's right. They're famous for the a dining right. venue. But uh, exactly. when you came in, you just made the name Wildflower synonymous with. Uh, parking on a Friday night with the best retro music in town. So yeah, this, well, yeah, you see already the, the lights in the in the gig. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> because of the success of the Friday nights, we had to add the Saturday nights uh, later on. No? So we, I've actually been doing it in Wildflower for about a year and a half now. Uh, wow, so from, it's been that from long. About, yeah, October, sometime late September, early October of 2018. So yeah, uh, I, I, you have a yeah. short video clip. Do you mind showing it now? Uh, then can you play the quick video? Let's just get a feel of what happens in Wildflower during Friday nights. Yeah, this is Wildflower BGC where we transferred to um, yeah. early this year. So standing room and everybody's dancing and lalang sa audio. Do we yes. have the audio? Anyway, so there. So it's standing room only. You turned a dining room into a dance floor. Yes. <laughs> well, um, and it's also like, the, well, the only place I know where the, uh, the people in their 40, 50, and 60-somethings uh, go out along with their children. And, uh, you know, wow. young and the, the children's barcada and all that. And then, you know, they're they're... Both com they're all comfortable with each other. So that's why um, I'm oh, here. There, there, I think we got the sound now. Are you on? I can see that uh, everyone's in the dance floor dancing to an, a classic uh, tune of all yeah. tunes. Papa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's really an equalizer, no? these retro nights, because people my age, from the baby boomer generation to, to the millennials, they party yeah. together. And yeah, I love it because, it. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a easy to access. Uh, it's very accessible because uh, the the both the Rockwell and the Wildflower BGC venues have um, really good parking uh, facilities, and then uh, it's safe because you know um, BGC is quite safe. We we always have roving guards and all that. And at the same time, it's you can get dropped off right in front uh, of the, yes. the venue, so it's it's really. You know, comfortable also, and I'm quite uh, familiar with the venue because I used to hold office right across in Piccadilly Star oh, Building. Oh yeah, yeah, and right I across. To, yeah. I used to I used to have lunches there and meetings at uh, Wildflower. So when I heard about the party switching from BGC to uh, to from Rock to BGC, I said, "Wow, I mean, I'm sure uh, you know more people are attending this because it's a bigger place, and yeah. I'm sure." out into the sidewalks because there's a really nice promenade on the side right yeah 
Yes. And, yeah. Um, yeah. There's a spillover. Uh, yeah. On on Friday nights, especially, we get upwards of six hundred to a thousand people at one night. Wow. That's why it's so hard in to out, get the table. Out. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, um, it's uh, all of a sudden, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's a good problem to have for a gig organizer like you. In fact, um, a lot of people uh, because I, I I I actually stopped partying about three four four years ago because of my yeah. health condition. But you know, yeah. I I love the music and uh, I know that uh, you know I'm sure that. Uh, the like I said, it's an equalizer because people from all generations party, moms, dads with their kids and their you know yeah. and, and their, their kids' friends. So it, it's I, I I really like the scene very much, um, and it's good clean thank fun. You, thank you. Good clean yeah, fun. And, yes. and and I'm sure that a lot of people out there are looking forward to the time when the lockdown stops, and I'm sure there's going to be like a freedom party, and and they're gonna you know. <laughs> I hope that you you go back to that scene because um, I'm sure they miss your they miss your gigs. And the sad part is I understand that in BGC the first um, coronavirus infection was detected in the Net Lima building. Yes, yes, the mistaken. building. That's why uh, that's why when we had our last our last gig was actually on a Friday, the 13th, which was uh, yeah March 13th. Uh, immediately the following day on the 14th, we decided uh, to not not to pursue the retro night uh, anymore because of, of that case in uh, Net Lima. Yes, and uh, there were, there were actually a lot of media outside already the uh, building, just uh, probably getting trying to get some news from that that company that that had a. Uh, a confirmed case of uh, coronavirus. Coronavirus. So, of COVID-19, yeah. Um, so, that was so shocking when I found out that there was a, a, a infected uh, patient in uh, in Net Lima because there's a lot of BPOs, yeah. multinationals, and yeah. other big corporations yeah. in that building. And it's very difficult to practice social distancing because the elevators get so yeah. cramped and... Obviously, yeah. in in things that you have, you cannot social distance because everybody's like standing up and dancing, and the club is well. Yeah. The bench is really packed with people. Like you said, there are more than a thousand at a peak night. Yeah. So yes. um, in and, and out, in and out, yeah. In and yeah. out, yes, yes, and that's that's yeah. quite a big number. And uh, yeah. to think that um, uh, wildflower has so it's not made like a club it's really a dining facility like a coffee shop french style bistro yeah, it's, yes that's right that's right yeah so that's why the next day we decided not to proceed anymore with the not, not to continue with the retro night anymore and and just wait for you know the new developments but yeah you know so march 13 which was our last one up to up to of course this week we haven't had uh uh any yeah. any gigs so I've done the next best thing, which are doing watch parties <laughs> on yeah. weekends. Yeah, we're gonna with, go with back to that because days. we're gonna in our second segment when yeah. we look at how everybody in our industry is responding to to the pandemic and the ECQ. We're gonna revisit that uh, new uh, announcement uh, about your watch parties. Meanwhile, ladies sure. and gentlemen, I'd like to call on our second guest, and this guy is uh, no stranger to the theater community because uh, he has been with the Repertory Philippines and he has appeared in a lot of uh, corporate events. And uh, we've also collaborated on a couple of events in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Ainel Carion. Hello, Tita Gracie, how are you? Hey, Arnel, good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you for having me. Of course, you know, um, Arnel, uh, We've worked in the past, and uh, I know that aside from doing theater work, you also do corporate hosting and voiceover announcing, and you wear so many hats. And I, I understand that you've even had a hand in doing some DJ work in or entertainment work in the cruise ship. Is that so? Is that true? Yes, that's right. Aside from my, my theater, um, I do uh, hosting and directing and voiceover for, uh, for corporate events. And then um, I've been dabbling into DJing for a few years already, but uh, in 
2015, I was uh, fortunate enough to actually be able to DJ on a cruise ship in uh, Miami, in the Bahamas. Wow, how interesting. You know, so um, really, you're, you're, you're very talented and a multitasker. And um, as an event uh, person, I know that you also dabble in events, right? Yes, do you that's correct. Do you do event management as well? I uh, once in a while I, I help out with people who who may need um, uh, people in the industry like actors or um, sometimes when I direct an event when a, an, an events uh, company approaches me to direct an event I usually gather my own team so that I can yes. work with several people that I know already as far as uh, for example the lighting the the sound. Uh, you know, the spinning yes. for the event. Sometimes we get another voiceover to do it. But once in a while, uh, because of budget, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I direct and do voiceovers as well. <laughs> I've done that before. I know. I think uh, we share the same, uh, you know, we share the same uh, approach to managing our events because I've also been in the events business as well. You remember our show, we had to stop traffic along EDSA for the 24th anniversary of People Power. Yes, I remember that very well. <laughs> the project for the People Power Commission, right? You were yes. our MC for that entire gig. And we... <laughs> For, for the benefit of our our viewers, that particular event was the 24th anniversary of the People Power Revolution, and Arnel and I worked on that event, and we recreated the entire People Power Revolution in that afternoon. And yes, the we whole had to stop the traffic. <laughs> we stopped the traffic until 2 a.m. The traffic in Metro Manila was awful because of that event. I'll never forget <laughs> that. <laughs> But uh, before the pandemic, what were you busy with before March when the ECQ was um, announced? Well, um, actually, right before it was announced, I was actually already at the uh, Conrad Hotel uh, preparing for an event in the afternoon. I was there in the morning. We were already rehearsing for this event, uh, which was slated to start after lunch. And it was an, a two-day event. But... Uh, Exactly at lunchtime, the uh, organizing committee uh, approached us and uh, they just told us that uh, because of the announcements uh, of the president, uh, they decided to put a stop to the, uh, to the whole thing. So we were there. So I had to go home early. And, uh, <laughs> there, there, you know, everybody there was just events. caught. I know. That's, that's the nature of this job i mean our you know our, our profession in the events business uh and and for you and as well as for me as well as steady we always put a clause in our contract that if it is an act of god remember that the yeah. things that we can control you know yeah. um it has implication to to our expenses so we cannot anymore refund our clients because true even the bed, the, the the payments we have to be paid and all that. So I hope you didn't get into any problems with your with your clients. Well, um, for that for that particular event, uh, it was supposed to be a two day event. Like I said, uh, since we were already there for the first day, um, they they uh, they were kind enough to uh, at least pay us for one day. Okay. Well, um, and, and I'm sure everyone was so happy and at least gracious because we really have to cooperate with our clients. We, yeah. we our, our industry here in the Philippines is a rather small, we're a tight group. We work with uh, probably the same pool of suppliers, but certainly the talent pool and the creative pool, the stage management pool uh, is shared no, among many event organizers, right? That's why That's I got true. no in theater because the people in theater are multitaskers you know they can do script writing and voiceover announcing and directing and you know i i and, and you're one of them and and i'm so happy that uh you know uh we have this tremendous pool in our in our community here in the philippines yeah because uh you know theater theater actors or people in theater in general are, are really troopers you know they really when you, when they're assigned a task, they really go for it, and it's something yes. It's always the uh, performance level. <laughs> right, that's true. And talking about performance level, uh, and here's another guest of ours, Eto Talaga, veteran, ladies and gentlemen. This next guest of ours 
uh, is no stranger to the stage and to Philippine music. He is uh, one of the stalwarts of a very famous group called The Company. He is a multi-awarded composer, arranger, and uh, artist, an all-around nice guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Moy Ortiz. Mabuhay, Tita Gracie. Hi, Moy. How Thank are you, my dear? I'm good. Thanks for having me on your brand new show, episode two, and I'm here. Thank you and congratulations with this new show. Thank you so much, Moy. And I, and I couldn't think of a better guest to be with me today because, uh, you know, us in the gig economy, um, we are such a tight-knit bunch in the Philippines. And you and I have collaborated on several big corporate events in the past. And I'm always so proud when I when I put the company in my list of recommended talents because for sure my clients will be happy with your performance. Thank you very much. Your words and even your intro puts on the pressure on me. Very affirming <laughs> and very validating. You're very generous and kind. Thank you. But just like... Um, just like uh, what I was listening, very interested in the stories of Teddy and Arnell. You know, the way we work, Gracie, is that um, you always have to give your very best to in, in every job. Yes, that's yeah. so true. Um, our professions, especially in the performing arts and the events management uh, industry, yes. walang take two there's no That's, when I we agree. go on stage it's live and we just have to make sure that everything goes on smoothly and if there's any problems us in the technical and performing group in the backstage in the stage management we have to solve our problems quietly you know? and i know That's you right. understand that's right. And you have to soldier on whatever the givens. And speaking of soldiering on whatever the givens, don't you think that's very appropriate for what's happening to our industries right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and what are your insights? What happened when you first heard about this? And you know, how did you cope? Um, to be honest about it, um, I saw it coming. I really saw it coming and I felt that, okay, it's going to go this way. But I didn't expect to this extent that it is, what is the um, precise term? Enhanced, what's the word? Communi community Enhanced quarantine. community quarantine. Um, in, you know, like for artists like the company, our bread and butter is really in corporate work. Uh, ang sa company, we don't do so much sa music music lounges and, you know, hindi masyada kami dun. Uh, when we do have public performances, it's either a concert or a, a, a mall show or a concert. Pero like to have puesto, um, we don't, we chose not to do that because we chose that um, our, we would concentrate our energies and our efforts in in your world, Gracie, Tita Gracie, yes. in your world, in, in the corporate and special events. So um, before the lockdown, we were super, super blessed. Ano yung sinasabi, Tita Gracie, sa Biblia? Um, like a camel going through the eye of a needle of the needle because um we had for the first time we had our canada we had a canadian tour four cities four cities in canada we did um we did a back-to-back -back, uh canadian tour with miss joey albert uh we did wow. winnipeg vancouver toronto uh and what was the last edmonton so wow. um this it was a blessing. At first, Liba, we all know that this coronavirus uh, issue and uh, the anxieties about it started uh, end of December. And we were even thinking, hindi matuloy ang tour, hindi matuloy. But, you know, yeah. we got our visas. It happened. The, uh, the tour was, uh, thank God, it was a very big success thanks to all of our kababayans and our audience in, in Canada. 
But you know what? It wasn't in the top of mind that there is this disease, there is this virus that's wreaking havoc all over Asia still in, in, in February. Wala pa yun sa pag-iisip na sa Canada. It was when after the tour, we went home at February 21, when we realized, I, mali, mali, Feb 23, I think, na, oh wow, this is real. Because when you enter Asia and you enter, enter the Philippines, Manila, that's all what people are talking about, the uh, coronavirus. And it became really real. And sa awa naman nun, Diyos, Gracie, Tita Gracie, uh, we still were able to do, after the tour, two corporate events. But wow. even in between those two corporate events, uh, end of February, our March corporate events, and we had a full tour with Casino Filipino, one by one, the gigs were getting canceled. And nararamdaman na namin na, oops, I think it's going to go this way. So that day when the president announced that um, he has made a decision together with his cabinet to have the enhanced community quarantine, it, alam mo yung parang yung mga pelikula na, the, it's like those dystopian movies where the world is ending and it feels like, uh, there was like panic. I really felt panic. Panic for my I'm parents sure. who, panic for my I'm parents sure. who are both um, seniors, because yes. we had to make sure that they had domestic staff and a driver who would attend to their needs, who would buy their groceries, who would buy their medication. But oh. um, kami naman siblings apat kami. Dalawa lang kami um, here living in Manila. One sister lives in Singapore. The other one lives in Australia. We're pretty tight. So before the city closed, uh, we took care of our parents. And uh, we, of course, we did, I think, the same thing like what the other guests did here. We uh, went to the bank and had to withdraw money and went to the grocery and... Uh, hindi panic buying. I hate, I hate, ayoko ng panic buying eh, because I, I feel that, <laughs> like that that's yeah. very selfish eh. Ang sa akin yeah. lang, siguro two weeks at a time, True. kasi kailan pagbigyan mo rin. Pagbigyan mo rin yung ibang tao who cannot True. afford to panic buy yes. and who can just afford to buy for the next day or the next three days. So hindi yeah. ako nagpanic buy, Tita Gracie. I yeah. bought uh, stuff for a week Great. No, no, no. That's not being honest. I bought <laughs> stuff. I bought stuff for two weeks, and I went to the bank, and then uh, I locked myself in like everyone else. But yes. I hindi ako um, magpapakakul sa yo and to say na I did feel a bit anxious because everything was closing, and you could see as a self-employed person like you, Tita Gracie, and your okay. other and your other guests. Uh, Nakikita mo na, okay, I have to adjust my lifestyle and my expenses because uh, for the foreseeable future, wala tayong income. Wala, wala talaga. Yeah. Talagang the future is un so uncertain. There's so much fear and uncertainty. And uh, I read somewhere that there's nothing like a crisis of this magnitude on a global scale, an unprecedented global scale, to bring the world down to its knees and That's hopefully there. And, and that you have a beautiful video to share with us. Um, and thank I you know for featuring that. I, I saw the video and I said, this is exactly the way we're going to lead into it in this interview because amidst that uncertainty, yeah. the loss, the panic, the panic buying anxiety and anxiety and sadly the death of thousands of people yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we have to pray we have As to call our our lord at this time because and be closer to him para tayong kinakalabit mo eh, diba talagang it looks like um there's a call there's a call right now and i'd like you to 
say a little bit of um, in like a background on why you went into this project? Anyway, friends, um, the project that uh, I wanted to talk about with Moy Ortiz is a video. And uh, as soon as our tech is ready, um, we can go back and play the video. It's called Hallelujah. It's a prayer and material that Moy was ready to share with the audience. And uh, we have a bit of a technical difficulty, but I think we can ready... We can play the video right now. So um, without further ado, let's roll that video for everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We'll be back shortly with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie only here on V81 Radio. Older adults and people of any age who have serious underlying medical conditions may be at higher risk for severe complications from COVID-19. This group includes people 65 years and older, people who live in a nursing home or long-term care facility, and people of all ages with underlying medical conditions, which include those with chronic lung disease and moderate to severe asthma people who have serious heart conditions, those with severe obesity or a body mass index of 40 or higher, people with diabetes, those with chronic kidney disease undergoing dialysis, and people with liver disease, and people who are immunocompromised, including those going through cancer treatment, smokers, transplant patients, those with poorly controlled HIV or AIDS, and those who experience prolonged use of corticosteroids or other immune weakening medications. If you are at higher risk for severe illness from COVID-19, take actions to reduce your risk of getting sick. Have supplies on hand. Take everyday precautions like washing your hands with soap and water. Avoid travel. Stay home as much as possible. Avoid all crews and non-essential travel and have a plan for if you get sick. If you have symptoms like fever, cough, and shortness of breath, call your doctor. 
Call 911 if you have emergency warning signs, including difficulty breathing or shortness of breath, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion or inability to wake, or bluish lips. To learn more, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19 or coronavirus.gov. Let's work together to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities. Thank you. Technology allows us to explore a variety of opportunities. So why not grab one for you? Kickstart your online business with Big Benta. Create an account, visit our store builder, then make your online shop. Be visible, gain customers, and run your business hassle-free. Plus, enjoy the support of our local merchandising team to maximize our platform. Make technology work for you with Big Benta. Pinoy e-commerce site made for you. Hi, this is Simon of Jeremiah. Pinoy music bang anap mo? Download the V81 Radio mobile app. Download now at the App Store and the Google Play Store. Free now, free forever, at siguradong hindi ka manghihinayang. Ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino Masahod hits o Pinoy Panalo Merong kwentong iyakan at tawanan Kahit na saan ka man ito'y Magpapakinggan Radio, 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 radio,